Hi, welcome into my studio. On this video, I'm going to be drawing a leopard's eye, but the whole point of the video is to look at underlayers, underdrawings. And I know a lot of people are confused about it. They don't know how dark to go, how much pastel to put down, and various things like that. So that's really what I'm going to be concentrating on for this video. Now, you may recognize this eye section from a, a full length video I did quite a while back of this snow leopard in pastel that's available to watch on my Patreon channel. The reference photo is from a fantastic photograph over on wildlifereferencephotos.com. But as I said, I'm just going to take that one section for this video and really concentrate on that and hopefully explain my process thoroughly for you all. Okay, so here's my reference on the left. Now I've blurred it out deliberately so that I'm only concentrating on the uh, tonal values and I'm not looking so much at the details. So I've just done that in an image editor. Haven't got to do it, but I find it easier to uh, blur it out on that. And as I said, I stop looking then and being distracted by high degrees of details early on. Now, as well as blurring it slightly, I've also darkened it, but only just a bit because I want my um, underdrawing to be dark enough so I can put the lighter tones on top. And that's one of the first stumbling blocks people have. They say, how dark do I need to go? Now, with pastels, you really don't need to be that specific because we can put a lot of bright tones on top of a dark underlayer. So we need to go dark enough so the light tones show on top. If you think about a white piece of paper, if we tried to draw a white pencil on top, it wouldn't show. So we need to go slightly darker than the lighter tones you're going to put on top. And you see in this video, the degree of darkness I go, I go really fairly dark on there. Now, another thing people ask me about is, do I need to buy pan pastels? Do I need to buy pastel sticks? Do I need to buy the pencils? Do I need to have them all? And Another reason I'm doing this video, I'm going to do this underlayer in three different ways. I'm going to do it using Jess Pan Pastels. I'm going to do another version using Jess Pastel Sticks. And I'm going to do a final version using Jess Pastel Pencils for the underlayers. Now, for the top details, I'm going to use pastel pencils all the time on all three of them. And you'll see how similar the final results are, which is showing you that you don't need to go out and buy all these different supplies. If you want to buy pans, you can carry on and do that, or you can just stick with pencils. It's up to you. You don't have to copy everything I do. Some artists like to buy different supplies and new supplies and try things out, which I do. And I'm then giving you the, you know, the option to use whatever you have in your own supplies. You don't got to go out and buy everything. Okay, so I've got my blurred reference. This is a sharp version, which I'll use then for the final details. And you can see how I've only gone slightly darker and I'm not gonna really put a lot of effort into the underlayer. People worry about it, but as you'll see, I won't put a great deal of effort. I've got just a piece of normal printer paper, use a few pans, a pastel tool, and I blend the colors on the printer paper. You see that in lots of my other videos. And I'm not giving out uh, tons of things about using different colored pencils, using different colored um, pan pastels. I'm just showing you the technique. You know, you can use whatever supplies you've got. I'm fortunate over the years I've built up a really massive supply of uh, pans and pastel sticks and pastel pencils. Use what you got. I'm showing you the uh, supplies. And you'll see now as I'm applying the pans, in the third direction. You'll see I'll do this with all the tools that I've got in the next one when I've, I use um, just sticks or pencils. You'll see I'll always go in that third direction. Okay, so if I need a color that's a little bit bluer, I'll add some blue. If I need it to be darker, I can add some black and, and so on. As you see, as I mentioned, I keep reiterating it, but I'm not gonna go that um, specific, that detailed or not detailed, that accurate is the word, on the underlayer. doesn't really matter all that much. Sometimes when I'm looking at the reference, even though it's blurry, I'll still squint my eyes a bit to just make it even that more blurry again. So as I say, I'm not looking 
at the, the details at all but look in at the tonal values the lights and the darks and really what you're looking at is it, the, at this stage it's the, the colors and the tones in between the highlights so if you look at that area over the eye that's bright don't go looking at the the hay that's got the highlight on it the brightest hay look at the in between ones that's the kind of tone and color you're looking for because we're going to put the highlight on top of those okay so you're looking at the shadowy areas in between the highlight areas so you can see I'm not going super accurate at all now the black markings on there are gouache paint and I put those on quite regularly in my artwork because they don't move as you can see I can put pastel over the top of them they're not going anywhere they're reserving the areas um, of the markings so I know exactly where they're going to be gouache dries matte so I know I can put pastel over the top of it as well so I'm just going to carry on now blocking in this under layer So now I'm starting to add some of those warm, greeny, uh, sandy looking tones that we can just see in the reference. Now the benefit with pan pastels is you can make these adjustments to your colour. So if I wanted to I could spend a lot of time and, and get them really accurate, you can mix colours like you can with paints. So you don't have to have um, the exact colours as you would more of really with pastel soft pastels and pastel pencils they said with the pans you are freer to uh, mix your own tones if you want slight, something slightly dark you can add a bit of black if you want it lighter you could have a bit of white and so I find pans much easier to do the underlay with and also much quicker so they fast uh, or quickly turned into my preferred way of doing underlayers and there's something that I find I, I keep going back to um, a lot when I'm doing drawings especially complicated drawings with big backgrounds I like to use them then but as you will see in the demos I'll show you the three different ways so don't feel you have to go out and buy uh, a full set of pan pastels or anything at all and I've also got a video on YouTube that shows you a great way of saving money with pans and shows you how to mix the colors together so you can see now I'm starting to go a bit darker I'm not putting much down at all. People to say how much pastel do I need to put down on the initial layer, I say as little as you can. Okay, so I'm not loading tons in there. I need enough to give me the effect. I've got that um, grey paper, dark grey paper as well that's helping me uh, with the drawing. I very, very rarely use a white paper. The paper is pastel matte as I pretty much always use and that allows me to put many layers on top but you can see how loose rough this under layer is and certainly not a major work of art at all I'm just using it as a means to an end the under layer is only going to support the details on top
Okay, so that's pretty much the pan parcel under layer. If you squint, you'll see them darker than the um, blurred reference. So I could have could have uh, put that reference a bit darker again. Now what I'm doing now is using my finger to blend that pastel into the surface. So basically I'm pushing it into the surface. Now this is removing any excess. It's going to allow me to get the extra layers on top. Sometimes I wipe my finger in a microfiber cloth that's in my lap. Just taking a bit off of there. That's what I'm doing then. And you see I'm going in the fur direction still. And just rubbing everything in. That's blurring it all out a bit. And as I said, it's taking excess from the pastel mat surface. And that's all I'm going to do for this first under layer. Okay, second under layer using pastel sticks. So I've got a variety in there. You could use um, the round ones like that blue one. You could use hard pastels like Conti sticks. You could use Faber-Castell pastels but like the one I'm using now. So pastel sticks I class then as as I said, there's a, there's a soft one, a blue that I'm going on. Um, any of those sticks, but be aware that brands such as Sennelia, Unison, they can be extremely, extremely soft. Now, some artists love them being really soft, and they usually do looser work or really large work. I like a bit more control. I don't like the pastel to fill the tooth of the paper up really easily because I want to put the details on top, so I prefer... I favour a harder pastel stick. One I like a lot is the um, Rembrandt pastel sticks. Now they do a really soft one and they do a harder one. This is a harder one that I've got in my hand. It's like an extruded one. And if you check out my pastel supplies videos, you'll see me talk about them on there. They're much cheaper as well. So you can use any of those sticks uh, for this stage. So basically, Instead of using the pans and the little tool, I'm just rubbing on the surface with the sticks. And I'm going to get a very similar appearance in the end to an under drawing. You can see rather than um, mixing as I would with pans, perhaps put a bit of blue in a grey pan and mix it on that paper. Now I'm putting them on the paper itself. You see I put that blue on top of the grey and then eventually I'll do that rubbing in with my finger to blend and end up with the same kind of look of an underlayer as I did with the pans. So it's really personal preference, that's what I'm saying with a lot of these underlayer uh, techniques and supplies. Some people just use pencils and that's perfectly fine, you know, but if you've got a, say you've got a 16 inch wide drawing and the sky is all a, a single blue you could go through three or four pencils doing that whereas it may only take you half of a, a stick because obviously the pencil holds a lot less pastel than one of these sticks so it's really much more economical to at least do the underlayer um, with sticks or with pans unless you're working quite small so you can see I'm starting to rub it in with my fingers blending it together I'll create that blurred underlayer again, doing it this way. Okay, so starting to blend it in. A little bit messier this way, perhaps, doing it for those of you that uh, don't like touching, perhaps, the dusty pastels. Um, you can see that there's not much pastel dust at all on the paper. Anyway, the pastel mat paper really um, holds it well. So the way I work doesn't create a great deal of uh, pastel dust, no matter which 
um, products you use and you can see now I'm blending it together it's all starting to get more muted it's all starting to get a bit more blurry gets darker as I'm blending one color into another that's perfectly fine I know I can put really light tones on top of a dark under layer And don't forget you can come back in if you found that you've gone a bit light because that's the most important thing with the underlay to try and go dark enough you can add bits of color like I'm doing now if you wanted to uh, just tint an area so you can keep working on it but don't go doing too many layers on an underlayer the paper will only hold so many layers even pastel matte okay so always a on the side of caution because you don't really want to fill the tooth of the paper up with an underlay and then find you haven't got any tooth to hold the details on top. I'm just going to add just a couple more bits of colour here and there. Okay, so I think that's enough for that under layer. That's the one with sticks. So if I grab the one now I did with pans, pop it by the side, you can see how similar they are. Very, very similar. So you can see it doesn't really matter whether I use pans or sticks. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too. So there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong. Hope to see you there soon. So for the un final underlayer, let's use some pencils. So I've got a selection here of greys, a bit of a blue in there. Um, pretty much the same type of tones and colours that I had in the pans and the sticks. Obviously, if you don't like touching pastels, pastel pencils or the pans is a really great way to go. You don't have to get your fingers dirty if you don't want to. So doing the underlay with the pencils, depending on how many pencils you've got, could be a bit more accurate because you've got more colors to choose from and it takes a little bit longer. And I'm going to start blending pretty much straight away because obviously the pencils are leaving a harder edged mark and I want my underlayer to be nice and soft. And also remember because the tip of the pastel pencil is much smaller than say the applicator on a pan pastel or a large pastel stick I'm not depositing as much pastel down so I'm going to need to perhaps go over this uh, two or three times lightly just to get to that same stage where I've got enough pastel down to actually blend it in with my finger. Now, as I said, with the pencils, you don't have to get your fingers dirty if you don't want to. And instead of blending with your finger, you can use a pastel stump, a paper stump, and they come in a hard paper, 
um, version and also a, a softer rice paper version and for the under layers I generally use the softer rice paper ones they're a bit more pliable once you've got those you can actually squeeze them and feel a bit of give in those and they blend more um, fully due to them being up just a little bit softer than the harder paper stamps so I'm just going to continue now I'll speed this process up a bit so you can see it develop a bit faster but you can see I'm just doing pretty much what I did with the sticks only I'm using a pencil format instead So just kind of glazing over the top here using my pencil on the side and I'm blending with my finger as well. Put a bit of colour into it. As I said you can use a paper stump instead if you don't want to get your hands dirty. I'm going quite fast. As I said it's just an under layer. If you squint at it you can see how I've gone just a bit darker than the um, blurred reference photo. Now I'm adding the colours here because even when I put those pencil details on top some of this underlay is going to show through and this is really going to help me with the colouring of it and it'll mean that I won't need to go um, using lots of different pencils on top to get those colours. And you'll see what I mean when I start adding the details. I only use a few a pencils on top and the colors will just pick up from the bottom. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do there. So that's the pencil one, that's the sticks one, and then this last one is the pans version. So you can see they're all really, really similar. And I've got the same effect pretty much from, well, all of them. And you could use um, the pans together, the sticks together, the pencils together if you wanted to. So now I'm going to detail the eyeball itself. As I said, I'm not going to spend too much time doing this. I've already done um, the tutorial on this snow leopard where I've concentrated on the eye on that when I did the full size whole version um, and I'm going to use pencils for all three anyway so I'll just show the one being done. The reason I'm using pencils instead of pans or sticks for the eyes is simply because it's a small area and the pencils obviously give me um, a much easier to handle in a small area such as this. That's the only reason I'm, I'm using uh, the pencils, just ease of application in a small area. So I've decided to start with that kind of a yellowy colour at the bottom. To be honest, with the eyes, I could start with uh, the top greeny part or the, you know, the shadowy areas. It doesn't really matter all that much. All you don't want to do is go put in something really dark in an area that's going to be really light on top because you may struggle to get it um, pure enough and light enough. That's the only um, thing I'd say really regarding the eye. Getting a bit of black in there 
straight away but again some a nice dark in that allows me to, to judge the other tones by it so I can see my darkest dark going in now and then I'll know how dark to go perhaps on you know on the greeny areas and the blue areas so let's get some of that greeny tone in now and I'm not going to try and really duplicate this color too much I just want to give you a quick example of an eye because what I really want to show you then are the details going on top of the underlays that we've that I've done just to show you how I can get the same effect no matter which um, underlayer supplies I'd used so that's the main idea of this video because that's where I'm getting a lot of messages of people saying they don't know how to do the underlayers and a lot of them are overly worried about how accurate the underlayers need to be as well as you can see with my underlayers they are really not very accurate at all I've got some of the, the undertone colors in there in place that's going to help me as I mentioned the gouache helped a lot because you can see still where the black spots are so I know confidently where to put those when I start putting them in with the pencils so now I'm just adding some of the blue that I can see in the eye you see that blue green at the top I haven't got a pencil that's that color blue green in these in reference photos you know there could be millions of different colors and we've only got usually about 72 in a set of pencils so that's where we need to, to then overlay one color over another and you would generally start with the lighter color first so I put the green in first and I'm just tinging it with the blue but the most important part of the eye would be the values so the lights and the darks and if we got those in place it'll still look real so put a bit of that lighter color in that blue that's what's going to make it look glassy and remember I spoke about a paper stump so this is a soft stump I'm using here and you can see how that does a really good job of blending the area together I'm just using a light touch you can clean the tip by just giving it a quick wipe on a microfiber cloth you can see this one's pretty much worn out the end is all raggedy but it's still doing the job that I want it to do and just a couple of minutes work a little bit of blending and we got the beginnings of a fairly realistic eye So I class that as my first layer of the eye. So that kind of acts as the underlayer we've just done on the fur. So now I'm coming back in and refining it. So you can see I'm adding some of this blue into the bottom. That comes along up here. We need that a bit darker at the top. So I'm pushing a little harder. And that comes around the top surface. And it's quite dark around the pupil itself as well. It's not too sharp edged. I need some more of this warmer brown around the top too. Now I'm putting in just a bit more detail in. On the bottom part of this pupil, it's a, a blue instead of a black because we've got that highlight that's actually sitting over the top of the surface of the eyeball. Remember the pupil is underneath, so I'll put some of that lighter color back on before I finish it. A bit more green on this edge. Now I'm changing colors with pencils a lot and at the end of this demo I've probably got 25 different pencils hanging around some that I did use um, when I picked my colors out before I did this demo some I didn't use 
but when you see me do something like this um, snow leopard large scale I've used lots and lots of different colored pencils and I've used lots of different brand pencils that's why I don't go and give out um, numbers you imagine every time you see me uh, change pencils if I got to stop and call out a number and I had a person um, complain the other day that they think I'm keeping secrets from them by not giving numbers out that I'm scared that if I give pencil numbers out that people will then be able to copy exactly what I'm showing them and that I'm I'm scared that people will be able to do that um, anyway and that is ob obviously absolutely ridiculous if I was scared about people um, copying my work I wouldn't be doing demos in the first place whatsoever and my whole business really centers around doing demos and teaching artists exactly how I do these um, fur techniques and and landscape techniques and, and all things like that so absolutely ridiculous I'm not keeping a secret what I'm actually doing is stopping beginners being roped in and um, getting kind of addicted to doing a paint by numbers demo and effect so I've done a very very easy um, tiger for be for absolute beginners where I list deliberately the limited colors that I use the reason behind that is so that a beginner who hasn't got any supplies can go out and buy just a few pencils cheaply and do the demo um, be impressed hopefully by how easy it is and how much they've achieved and then they can think do I like doing pastels or not I haven't spent much money yes I like it okay now I'll go out, out and buy more supplies and if they don't like it they haven't wasted a lot of money and they could go on to, to do a different type of medium instead and that's why I did that so if you are a complete beginner there is a demo or two that I've done for you but after you've done those I really urge you then to start to learn how to see the colors and I've got lessons on that so you can make your own color choices and then you can do your own subjects the whole reason about you know why I show demonstrations is not for you to really copy them it's to go out then and try different subjects yourself and obviously then when you're doing that the colors that I'm using is completely irrelevant so you could use the technique I'm using now and do a giraffe you know you'd be using completely different colors or you could be doing a tiger and that's what you want to be able to do to get the knowledge and the confidence so that you can then go out and do the subjects that you actually want so as you can see I've just been continuing with a bit of refinement the eye is starting to look a little bit more real and once I've just added a few more bits I can start on that fur texturing okay so that's the eye done that's the underlayer done this is the one that I've done with the pastel pencils if you remember I've got a pencils wrote in that middle so you know how I did that underlayer and now I'm starting to build up the um, texture on top so all the little hairs and it's not a long drawn out process with pastels it's really quite fast and I'm just working out which color best suits uh, for that appearance and you can see I'm not going and colouring everything I'm allowing some of that background to show through and that's where I said before that that background colour the underlayer influences that final drawing to a quite a big degree and my whole 
plan now is to make sure these fur markings go in the correct direction and I will be doing a couple of layers so I'll be going gradually lighter and lighter just darkening these markings a bit because obviously when I blended the underlayer over the top it's, it's, it's um, greyed out these darks so I'm just putting them back in so I want quite a few of these lighter areas to overlap over the dark now on some videos you'll see that once I've done the that kind of a underlayer the mid-tone underlayer what I then do is come back in with a dark pencil or a dark stick and if you watch my cougar demo demo you will see me do this and you see I'll put a dark layer of texture in first before I start with the lighter layer now I generally do that on subjects that have got very distinctive um, sharp edged highlight haze so in this instance you can see that the the darker parts in between the light haze if you know what I mean are not that different in tone in lightness and darkness to the highlight areas so there's not a massive difference between the the dark areas of the fur and the highlight areas of the fur now when there is a really big difference that's when I come in first with the dark fur texture yeah and then I put the lighter fur texture in between it in this case I can just go in um, on top of my underlayer and start putting the details on top and already with just a couple of minutes work if that maybe only a minute or so I've started to get the fur texture looking quite believable and there's already quite a large area covered So as I'm working my way down here, I need smaller strokes. So you need to be aware when you've got a longer hair and first stroke, and then you're going into smaller hairs here, they're really small. So I'm only putting tiny little markings down. You can see how the fur, the hair has changed direction as well. So I'm being mindful of when that's happening you don't have to be really really exact but you need to get that general um, flow the general position in place Now because I'm right handed I'm working pretty much from left to right that means I'm not leaning uh, too much on the work that I've already done. Could have put the eye in last as well if I wanted to. Personal preference whether you actually want to put it in and then work around it or do it after. So the hair, the fur just comes up around the, the eye.
And now these areas are a bit more pronounced, a bit more distinctive, so I've sharpened the pencil. Now, if you look at the reference, the part above the eye, you see that kind of ridge that we've got of hair. When you look at the right hand side, those hairs are obviously underneath the hairs that are on the left hand side. So we need to overlap to some degree. So I'm just putting in some of these real detailed ones at the top first. And then I start on the right hand side. You can see I'm working my way over to the left and slightly overlapping the hairs. And I'll come back in then and highlight these as well. And you can see some of these are real kind of thick individual hairs and some of them are more clumpy together. And as I said, I'm making sure I'm not going too light just yet. I will come back in and punch up the highlights a lot more. So doing a new layer now where I'm coming in lighter and pushing harder on the pencils. So building up a layer on top of another layer. So this is really the third layer. We've got our under layer. We've got our first layer of texture. Now I'm starting to come in with much more highlights on top of the under texture. So that's giving me depth. It's giving me um, a greater feeling that we have got just like in the reference haze on top of haze you can't really do this and make it look realistic if you only do um, one layer of texture So I've slowed the video back down because I'm really pushing in quite firmly now to get these larger light colours haze over the you know the centre of interest which is the eye. We get a couple of individual haze just coming over the top of the eye as well. And there are differences between the reference and my drawing. You don't have to do try to get complete photo realistic for something to look real. So don't beat yourself up if your colors may be slightly out. 
or the position of the hair may be slightly out and things like that you know the lightness and darkness is important direction of the haze that's important as well but you know enjoy the process too if you want to go photorealistic you need to spend a lot more time on the under layers and then a lot more time on your color selections on the overlayers and you need more supplies because you need a lot of colors to pick from too. I'm happy trying to capture the essence of the um, subject. Okay, so I'm just going to speed up again. I'm going to carry on going lighter and lighter. Just add in more layers as you've seen so far. Okay, so as I'm just putting in these final details, I think that's that's about enough done really um, for this first demo. So this is the pencil underlayers. You can see I've wrote pencil there on that paper and just the pencils on the top. So this proves the point if you don't want to go buy in um, soft pastel sticks, you don't want to go buy in pan pastels or anything, you can do the drawing with just pencils. So I want my um, Patreon members and followers to know you don't have to go out and buy everything. I know as an artist, it's part of the hobby, uh, an exciting part for me is going out and actually buying and trying different pencils, different products and collecting lots of these different colors as well. And if that's what you like, hey, that's great, you know. Knock your socks off, go out and fill your boots, as they say, and buy whatever you can afford and, and enjoy the process of it. But if you're working on a budget, you don't have to. And that's a message I wanted to get across in this video. You buy the supplies to suit what you want to do. As I also mentioned on the video, bear in mind, if you're using just pencils, you're going to wear them down and wear them out really quick. It's not the most cost effective way to work. If you're on a bit of a budget, just buy some of the pan pastels. Watch my YouTube video and you'll see how I got a video there showing you how to buy the pans on a budget, which ones you need, how you mix your own colors. You don't need a big set. If you wanna go out and buy sticks and you're working on wildlife a lot, 
then you know some of the greys and browns for the under layers that's going to be your most useful colors because you'll be putting a lot of the details on with pencils yeah and by using pans or sticks it's cost effective in the long run because they both last a long time there's a lot of pastel in the pan pastel pans in the sticks they really save your more expensive pencils from wearing out very quick So that's the final highlights added now to the pastel pencil version of the Snow Leopard Eye. Hope you've enjoyed that and let's take a look at the next version. Okay, so here we go again. This is the pan pastel underlayer. The eye I've obviously already done. I've done the same technique with the pencils you've just seen, so there's no point in me repeating that on the last two, the pans and the pastel stick underlayers just putting in the darks uh, re-establishing them more quickly you notice you know I go I'm doing each layer or each one uh, demo slightly differently I'm gaining more confidence so I'm getting quicker I'm thinking now on this one oh I got no I got to re-establish these darks might as well do it all in one go straight off whereas on the first video I um, did it more as I was going along I'm also thinking that some of these areas need to be a bit darker as well so I'm going to use the pencil if you remembered in the first video I said about sometimes if there's dark very dark um, shadow areas in between the haze you can put them in with the pencils or with your sticks and that's what I'm doing now so you can see I'm putting in some of the darker haze in the direction of the fur growth I'll just highlight these or darken these up just so I know where these spots are going to be so that's all making this a bit faster and I'm really not going to put quite as much effort into um, these last two versions as I did on the pencil one just because we've already I'm really just showing you the techniques and I want to just prove to you that you can do the same thing with uh, lots of different supplies so I'm not going to let you make you sit through another hour of me doing pretty much the same thing with these pencils um, on top of the pans so I'm going to, to speed these last two tutorials up quite a lot but you'll see I'm doing exactly the same technique I'll be going lighter and lighter putting the texture on top just as you've seen for the last half hour or so with the pencils so I'm just going to put a bit of this texture in so I can see we can go a bit darker here when I'm squinting at my reference I can see I need to go a bit darker down here I'm looking now at the area that's in between the highlights yeah these hairs come along and down kind of swirl around I need a softer edge here so you can see I'm going this is real time that you're seeing now and because I've got the confidence of doing that first eye I can go a lot faster I know the colors that I want to use that created that first one I know where I could have gone perhaps a bit darker so that's what I'm putting in now I know that I could have put those black spots in quicker so I've done those already so obviously with my experience from that first one I'm gonna, gonna pro probably create a slightly better version here
Okay, so now I'm at that stage, exactly as I was with the pencil on top of pencil version, just putting in the texture. So I might as well just speed this lot up because it's going to be pretty much exactly the same as what you've just seen. Okay, so final details going into this version. So pans, underlayer, pastel pencils on top. And I think you'll agree that, you know, for all purposes, really is almost identical to the ones that I just did, the one I just did that was using only the pencils. So it really doesn't matter if you use the pans underneath um, or just pencils underneath. You can get the same effect on top no problem at all so it's your personal preference if you want to use the pans underneath i really like the pans i find they're faster and also as i mentioned previously i can blend the colors together or mix the colors together even to get a more accurate uh, color the color that i just want rather than being dictated to um, by the pencil or the uh, stick i can actually make those little adjustments by blending and mix in pan pastel colors together. So let's took look at the final one, sticks. You can see it rolled up on the top of that bit of masking tape. Um, this is the sticks under layer. As I just did on the pans, I'm gonna get all these spots in place first. Now I liked what I did on the pan pastel demo where I put this bit of um, fur texture in with the dark um, pencil. So I'm doing exactly the same again. I've learned from those two what worked and what didn't work. And um, I found this was a bit of a benefit. Again, the darks are a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna carry on with that before I put these highlights back in on top. I'm really starting to get a strong sense of deja vu as I'm doing this third exact same uh, demonstration. But I really, really wanted to get this underlayer problem that people have been having worked out once and for all. So I know it's repetitive. I'm going to speed it up. You can see I'm doing exactly the same as I did on the first two um, underlayer and detail demonstrations. So as I mentioned, no point seeing we do exactly the same. What 
is interesting or should be interesting for you is the end results and how similar they are. Okay, so here we are at the final stages of the last tutorial. Just darkening a few of these dark spots at the end. Some people say they work lax punch and going in and re-establishing the darks can usually solve that problem. Just a bit on the pupil of the eye as well. And that's the last one finished. So let's take a look at the three together lit properly studio lighting digital camera and as you can see there's virtually no difference other than the fact that obviously I can't get everyone exactly the same anyway even if I did the same one on the same um, under layer I couldn't duplicate it exactly anyway but they really are almost identical so the point I wanted to prove was you can do your under layer in any of those mediums you can build your details on top really doesn't make any difference at all. So it is personal preference, the supplies you want to use, try them out. If you want to try the pans just by a couple of the darker shades, browns, greys, try them out on some scrap paper. I don't know why but beginners seem to have a habit of wanting to try things out on a massive complicated uh, masterworks that they, they are doing themselves don't do that I don't do it after 20 years oil painting when I want to try something out I try it out on a bit of scrap and I've been doing pastels for about two years or so I try it out on scrap I do little studies such as this it takes the pressure off you getting things wrong when you're gonna make mistakes and when you're trying things out it's a learning process it's going to happen let that process happen on your scrap paper and expect it to happen Lots of beginners also get stressed up about how dark to go with the underlayer. I really think I've covered that now. It's not really specific as in it's got to be exactly like this. It's just got to be a bit darker than the finished work. That's all. So I've shown it three times that. Um, once again, you've got to practice these things yourself. A lot of beginners feel insecure when they're trying something out. By doing the practice bits that takes the pressure off as I just mentioned. Now the other way is you've got to actually do these things. I've done pastels for two years. The first one turned out really good because I had the right supplies but um, you know make sure you're using pastel matte paper or similar paper otherwise this layering technique is got not going to work very well for you. You need a paper that's going to hold it in otherwise your top layers are going to be smudging into the bottom layers and they're not going to have the nice crisp sharp edges. A top tip with the under layer don't go too dark if you need an area that needs to be very light on top. Once again the way to try this out I can show you and show you and show you I've got something like oh I don't know 50 videos or more on just pastels and I can keep showing it you but you've got to learn it yourself as well so put some just a square of dark down on your pastel matte paper and try to get white or light color to go over the top of it you're soon going to learn how dark you can go and still get lights to sit on top and the same goes for the darks if you need a real dark spot don't put something light 
underneath where the dark spots got to go. Okay, so you've got to try these things out. I hope this lesson has helped you. Hope it's cleared up a lot of the mystery around the underlayer, the underpainting, if you want to call it that. And I hope you've enjoyed it. See you all again real soon. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.